president of the California Business and Industrial Alliance. We're a trade association dedicated to bringing awareness to a crisis that affects every employer and freelancer in California. It's a crisis we call PAGA. So welcome to the California Labor Law Odyssey. Today we'd like to welcome Karen Anderson from Freelancers Against AB5 and she's been on the show before. We've worked together on several uh, opinion related pieces that have been published and uh, other projects together. So welcome to the show, Karen. Hi, Tom. Nice to be back and nice to see you again. So, you know, the one thing that I think both of us run into, and we wanted to take a little bit of time to discuss uh, AB5, some of the effects, and now on a nationwide uh, scale of what's going on, there's a lot of times we get opportunities to be in those opinion pieces or we get opportunities to be on a radio show. And quite frankly, that's very limited. You know, we don't have an opportunity to really uh, get into some of the details and some of the weeds that I think people need to hear and, and people need to understand, you know. But just to get started, it'd be great if, if you could let some of the viewers know, you know, more about your group, why you started it, and currently, you know, where your group is today. Well, I started Freelancers Against AB5 in California in November 2019, right after Newsom signed AB5 into law. And then uh, it went into the AB5 went into effect in January 2020. And I have a, almost 19,000 members. Good, and, good for you. Yep. And I just, I started it because I wanted to see how it was affecting all these other professions. And then I had a front row seat beginning at the end of 2019, even beginning in November of 2019. I started getting all these stories coming in, pouring in about independent contractors losing their livelihoods overnight because their clients had to terminate them. They could no longer utilize them legally as independent contractors. And then it it just kept kept building and building and then and then in January 2019 the floodgates opened and we saw so many people from so many different sectors and professions just losing their careers their businesses their livelihoods you know everybody from uh community theaters and and uh, nurse anesthetists to forensic nurses and writers and graphic designers and court reporters and translators and interpreters and musicians and just across the board every kind of uh profession that you can think of and and it's just the it's still in effect. A lot of people um, think that AB five doesn't exist anymore because they get it mixed up with Prop twenty two. And Prop right. twenty two was a ballot initiative that happened in November of twenty twenty, where the voters um, voted to uh, allow um, ride share and app based delivery drivers to remain independent contractors. So a lot of times you'll see in these stories these 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 reporters they don't get their facts straight they they'll say oh it, uh, prop 22 exempted all gig workers or prop 22 is the, you know is the same as ab5 and ab5 doesn't exist anymore and nothing could be further from the truth you know the 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 drivers the delivery drivers and the ride share drivers comprise only i would say maybe 7 to 10% of the independent workforce in california that's affected by ab5 yeah yeah and you know the 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 bad part was i mean that was the target i mean y you know big labor decided to you know launch a full assault on on uber and lyft and doordash because they wanted them to unionize they you know saw a huge opportunity and unfortunately the the true independent contractors uh, they were the ones that got hurt by this law. I mean, really uh, unintended co consequences, without a doubt, uh, from from their efforts. And I don't, I don't think they've still recovered from it. They've made exemptions and exemptions and exemptions. I mean, what are your thoughts on AB five as it currently sits today? Well, I don't believe that it was unintended consequences. I believe the legislature and Lorena Gonzalez, the author of the bill, who now, by the way, is the head of the California Labor Federation, as you know, and the California Labor Federation was the one that sponsored AB5. California Labor Federation represents, I don't know how many, 1,300 unions in the state of California. 
California. They're, they're huge. They are huge. The sponsor, and then when she she was in the legislature as the appropriations chair and the author of AB five, you know she she crafted laws on at the behest of big labor labor, and now she's you know she left the she left the legislature to become the head of the head of you know to go back to where she came from basically, and she wants to unionize all of California. So that's just a little background. But as far as they knew, they knew that there was going to be uh, consequences on on all all manner of professions. In fact, in my group, uh, we've identified well over 600 categories of professions that have been um, harmed in some way or other at some point or other. In that's time. Incredible. that's incredible. And, and see, that's, I think, a, a thing a lot of people don't understand, even our viewers. You know, how many different types of independent contractors out there, you know, who who, what type of jobs are there? I mean, you know, we spoke to a lot of people as well, you know, translators, you know, at one time when we were in, you know, Afghanistan that that were part of the, the war effort, we're no longer allowed to, to, to have that kind of an effort in the, in the state of California, which is just insane when you think about how the law affected it. But the reason I used unintended consequences is because that's what the other side constantly uses when it comes to some of the laws and bills they drafted. And after they make this this gigantic stroke on, on all businesses, they'll say, well, we didn't realize that would happen. And now, you know, we realize we got to do some exemptions and carve outs. And the interesting part is, if you wanted to be part of the exemption, you wanted to be car part of the carve out, I believe you had to ask the labor unions uh, for permission to do so. Is that right? Well, right at the beginning, the, the original uh, bill exempted a lot of white collar professions like doctors and lawyers and accountants and architects and veterinarians and dentists and engineers and realtors. And um, they had the loudest uh, lobbyists and they had the money to be able to, you know, grease the wheel, so to speak. And then, um, of course, uh, when it went into effect. Now, I wanted to say that about even those those professions that are exempted. AB5 throws a wrecking ball into their traditional independent contracting relationships. In other words, it's very hard for a, for a, an attorney to be able to hire an independent contractor um, paralegal because paralegals don't have an exemption. Same with an architect. An architect might have an exemption, but he's not going to be easily able to contract with an architectural renderer or a graphic designer mm -hmm. or a web designer. So it just throws a wrench into all the traditional independent contracting relationships that we we are, have come to enjoy prior to AB5. And then right. in 2020, the, the, the um, author of the bill, Lorena Gonzalez, picked winners and losers and dug through the rubble and the people with the loudest voices received exemptions. But those exemptions are, there's always fine print and caveats even with the exemptions. So it's a myth to say that 100 professions are exempted because, because when you look at the exemptions themselves and all the fine print and all the hoops that you have to jump through a lot of these people aren't able to take advantage of the exemption as it exists and then also um it's almost nearly next to impossible to operate you know in some of these sectors under ab5 for example the event planning community is really getting hammered and having a really tough time operating uh even uh, we've heard from uh, nurse anesthetists in the in the in in rural hospitals that it's it's just it's traveling nurses we we've we've heard about the traveling nurses are a big well. issue exactly. as well exactly you know but so that the exemptions came and kind of you know squelched the bad optics and then Lorena Gonzalez was gifted with the pandemic of course that obscured all the bad optics that would have been obvious to everybody right you know so she got to blame the the pandemic on all the theaters closing, which had already been closing prior to AB5 months before because of AB5. So there's just a lot of, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors with the exemptions and it's just a complete and total mess in, it, in California. It continues to be so, but the media, they only want to concentrate on Uber and Lyft. And of course, trucking um, is also in the news lately because they've kind of lost all of their, their litigation to try to get their independent owner operators exempted. And, and um, I, I, I don't know how it's, it's definitely impacting the trucking industry and major. Oh, the trucking industry is really bad. I mean, you think about 
people that at one time were paid mileage, they bought their own rig, they they set their own routes, you know, they, they liked, hey, I, I live in Kansas and I can come to California once a week and I can make a very good living and I can have a nice home and raise my family in Kansas. And that pretty much got ruined and destroyed. And what about the poor, poor trucker that owns his own rig and says, I can't come to California anymore. And all of a sudden you have a lot of these independent, uh, you know, truckers who are no longer able to come to California. And now you see the rates of freight going up in the state of California and just another added cost. And I think quite frankly, you know, this law has been a disaster from day one. It's just a complete disaster. And again, you know, Lorena Gonzalez trying to unionize trucking industries, trying to unionize Uber, trying to unionize uh, DoorDash. It doesn't work. You know, unions are not for everybody. And, uh, you know, they're promoting it for their, for their long-term goals and agenda, which is unfortunate to the majority of people that, that work for a living. Right. The truckers, the out-of-state truckers that are delivering a load into California, if they're independent owner-operators, they are very remiss to even cross the border. Cro- yeah, I mean, cross the state line. So they set up these these stations, you know, in Nevada at the at the state line, so that they can do these drop-offs. Because they once they come in and drop off their freight per AB five, they can't really come back with a load of freight because they're operating as independent contractors in the state. You know, so how does that any of that make sense for anybody? You know, it's so convoluted, as you've said before. Nobody knows uh, who's exempt, who's who's not exempt. Even the people that are exempt. I, I mean, the stories that I get in my group also are of the business community, small businesses, moms and pops, and even single owned businesses who get audited by the Employment Development Department and investigated by the Division of Fair Labor Stand, I mean, Division, <laughs> Division of, um, uh, excuse me, the DLLC. Um, they, um, they are the ones that are subjected to uh, these massive, um, astronomical fines and penalties for the crime of misclassifying a single independent contract. And the, and the governor's putting a lot of money uh, into the budget, even in, when the budget is not that great, to uh, enforce uh, AB5, independent contractors. And the way that they're doing that is employers that turn in 1099 forms You know, all of a sudden they're auditing everybody's 1099s. Hey, is this person really, truly an independent contractor? So the minute you're giving an an employee, independent contractor, a 1099, you know, there's a good chance the state's going to try to find something wrong with that relationship. Yeah, and other triggers for an audit would include the um, independent contractor erroneously applying for unemployment insurance that you know, because independent contractors are not eligible for traditional on them. So that will trigger an audit. And that's what happened during the pandemic because Lorena right. Gonzalez and Julie Sue both were tweeting out to people that, well, they didn't want them to apply for the um, pandemic unemployment assistance that the feds offered as a rescue during the pandemic for in- independent contractors. They wanted them to apply for unemployment insurance. And that it was, you know, was like digging a hole and covering it up with 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 leaves and and entrapping all of these businesses. So we saw that bear uh, play out in our group. We had tons of people coming in and saying, "I'm getting audited. I'm getting audited." Just little guys, you know, florists, dance studios, um, uh, wedding photographers, uh, event planners, uh, you name it. Just uh architects all these different people getting audited and being subjected to these massive amounts of fines that actually many of them got put out of business because of right and it's still happening today and that's the dirty little secret of ab5 is how how cruel it is to the to the moms and pops in the small businesses of california agreed agreed so speaking of julie sue so now you know she had made a commitment we're not going to do ab5 on a national scale uh you know we're not going to do that and here we are today what happened where where are we at now karen she claims she treats ab5 like a hot potato like she wants to distance herself from it but she 
she was the uh, you know labor secretary of California when AB5 went into effect, and she was the endorser and enforcer of AB5 and touted AB5 as the model for the nation. Right. And so now because of the disaster, you know, leading up to this new DOL rule that they just implemented on March 11th, 2024, under the Fair Labor Standards Act, it's 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 modeled after AB5, even though she says it isn't. And the reason we know that is because in the first draft of the regulation, the rule, the first draft was 184 pages. And they actually, the Department of Labor actually lauded AB5 and lamented the fact that they couldn't verbatim imp- deploy that California's ABC test into the Fair Labor Standards Act because of a technicality, but they did everything they could to mirror the ABC test from California throughout the rule nonetheless. So now when the rule went into it was published in January of 2024, it turned into a 339 page regulation wow. with all this quote unquote interpretive guidance. And, um, it, you know, that can go that the interpretive guidance uh, leans heavily towards uh, finding for employment status in these relationships if these bureaucrats and judges really want to find for that. You know, and another reason that we know that the Biden administration supports AB5 is that they recently filed an amicus brief with uh, uh, Olson versus State of California um, Ninth Circuit hearing that Department of Justice filed an amicus brief in support of AB5 just within the last couple of months. So they like AB5. And in fact, President Joe Biden campaigned on saying he liked AB5. He came out and said he liked AB5 and they wanted to put that California's ABC test into tax, labor, and um, employment laws. And that's what they've done federally. And so that's what they've done with this workaround, this rule under the FLSA. Who's who's affected right now? Is it the same as AB5? I'm a viewer. I'm, 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 I'm novice to all of this right now. And now I'm reading about these things. And, and like you said, AB5 itself in California is very convoluted. And a lot of people don't understand. Do we have the same scenario now on a national level? Exact same scenario of it being convoluted, arbitrary, capricious, obtuse. There's four or five lawsuits already, two of them from um, uh, freelance uh, journalists and writers, one of them from uh, trucking companies in Louisiana. Um, me personally, if you read through, it's it's a six-factor uh, totality of the circumstances test, which is, is, is a little different than AB5. But then there's a seventh factor that they added in there that could be anything they want it to be. They don't say exactly, but exactly. They just say we can, we can, we can add a seventh factor to this. Don't you love the the vagueness? A lot of these bills are vague. They write them, and and they don't even understand the implications. And then they have to go back and look at it and say, hey, I think we need to, you know, to tweak this a little bit. And then sometimes the tweak becomes worse than the original bill, even though they're saying, oh, no, it's better now. Yeah. And that's, you know, they, they, all their interpretive guidance for each of of the factors, you just feel like you're descending into Dante's Inferno, into the circles (laughs) of hell reading it. Because how, how do I, as a weekly columnist, pass this test. I don't. I fail three of the factors. The wow. permanence factor, in other words, they don't want independent contractors. They they just want, they don't, they, they, they claim that you can have an anchor client, but they don't want it to be consistent week after week after week. It can't, shouldn't be a fixed rate. You should be able to, you know, um, have profit and loss for, prove profit and loss for every single, you know, um, uh, contracting assignment. And then it can't be integral to the business, which is the same as the B prong of the ABC test, which says that, you know, the independent contracting services have to be outside the usual course of business of the hiring entity. So I'm looking at, I'm going, I fail. And so what you're going to see more than likely is because it's an election year, they're not going to start heavily enforcing this. You know, they're going to, you know, do their sneak attack afterwards. 
But what you're going to see is businesses preemptively terminating their contracts with independent contractors, just like we saw with AB5. They're not going to hire them as employees, or if they do, it could be maybe as a part-time employee who doesn't get any benefits at all. And as we saw with AB5, with a recent Mercatus study out of George Mason University, AB5, they found empirical data that AB5 has led to a significant decrease in unemployment um, in the in traditional W-2 jobs, as well as its significant decrease in self-employment. So it, these policies don't work in terms of what they say their intention is, is to make more people employees. And it's funny you say that because, you know, right now the state of California has the highest unemployment rate in the nation. So I guess for anybody that's listening, sounds like you just gave us a fact that that helped contribute to to the stat and it's a stat that you know we should not be uh happy with or are proud of but i don't know how much more uh legislators the governor you know can continue to to make business business people's lives this difficult i mean People just don't understand it. And, and, you know, even when you look at the independent contractor thing, I mean, California was the state, hey, I'm going to come and, you know, I'm going to work as a, as a, as a waiter and, and I'm going to try to get a job acting and, you know, I'm going to drive and I'm going to try to make some money doing that. I'm going to have all these different side hustles going on as I'm trying to advance my career, you know, as an actor, as a screenwriter, as, you know, what happened to California? I, I mean, honestly, where did it go? Well, so many people lost. I, I have collected for the last four years and counting thousands of stories of devastation from across the vast swaths of professions of people who've lost their careers and their livelihoods uh, originally overnight when the law went into effect. And then even the people that got exemptions, they already lost their clients and they never came back, you know, right. and they, like I said, are, are, you know, smoke and mirrors, some of them. And so it's now we're at the point where it's death by a thousand cuts. And I'm, I'm hearing stories of people in, you know, the, the wellness community, like spas and massage therapists who can't operate under this law. Dance studios cannot operate under this law. Um, it's very difficult. There's, there's a lot of um, information about nurse anesthetists and how it's, it's really made a mess uh, in the in operating rooms across the state you know in terms of not being they're not being able to rely on independent nurse anesthetists to to help them you know with these shifts and uh the community theaters there's so many of them that, that have closed or if they if they're operating they're operating illegally or they're operating it you know with half of a you know, or a quarter of what they used to do for their performances because putting everybody on payroll is impossible it doesn't it's matter. impossible it does in, in community theater and musical theater production you cannot hire an independent contractor in california at all no matter what the job is it's um uh whether it's for a second a minute an hour a day a week everybody has to put be put on payroll so that just causes a massive confusion how do you put somebody on payroll that's only working for you for half an hour how does how does that work yeah you know, and, and and now you know again we're looking at hey we're going to be dealing with the same set of problems on a national scale how what is going on i mean i really really think that um the biggest issue the state of California has is big labor. Labor unions are pretty much telling our legislators and governor, this is what you need to do. And we have the same thing from the Biden administration. I mean, it is the union driving all of this, and they don't understand how small businesses operate. They don't understand the independent contractor manager. You know, they all they understand is is organizing and and trying to unionize as many employees as they can and we have so many workers rights we have so many different options now 
is a union necessary. It's not the 1930s. It is not the 1930s. Well, that's what they're trying to do with this DOL rule is drag us back to the 1930s because a lot of this before, uh, there was never an Obama rule under the FLSA. That is another deception tactic of these politicians saying, we're just returning to the Obama era rule. No, we're not. In the end of 20, uh, at the end of the Trump administration, their, their independent contractor rule finally went into effect. And it was the first time that the DOL had ever done any formal rulemaking under the FLSA. And then Biden gets elected and, and and attempts to rescind the rule and then, you know, do their own, which is much more draconian. The, the previous rule gave a lot of clarity and certainty about who can be an independent contractor and, and who can't and, and addressed legitimate misclassification, which does exist. But this one is just a catch-all blanket, uh, you know, type of regulation that will, um, you know, if, if a bureaucrat at the wage and hour division, some district office in a cubicle wants to find in favor of employment status, uh, they can do it with this rule because there's enough leeway when you read through it. And it, the case law that they they cite gives them that leeway in the rule. So let's talk about this new coalition. Yes, you and I are co-leaders of the coalition <laughs> called Save Independent Work. Save Independent Work. So how is Save Independent Work doing right now? Well, it's doing good. I think that we're getting a, a lot of a lot of coverage, um, and we are uh, supporting Representative Kevin Kiley's uh, joint resolution one one six to overturn this regulation in the House, and also Senator Bill Cassidy has a similar resolution called. S something re resolution 63 or something that, that would do the same. In other words, they want to rein in these agencies that are running roughshod over everybody with these massive rules that impact the entire economy that they should not have that amount of power to have under the Administrative Procedures Act. So if you go to saveindependentwork.org, you can find a, you can you can send your you can find your representative and send them a letter in support of these two resolutions to overturn this horrible draconian overreach of government. That's great. That's great. And you know, Kevin Kiley has been, uh, in my opinion, the guy's a rock star. I mean, he's really been supportive of the business community. You know, I've spoken at a few of his events. I met him, you know, super nice guy. And and he, you know, he's fighting for us. And, and that's what we need, uh, more elected officials that are willing to fight for us. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, I look at these scenarios and a lot of times people say, well, it's a Democratic, it's a Republican thing. You know, Democrats, they want union. They're fighting for workers. You know, Republicans are fighting for business. When it comes to AB5, when it comes to independent contractor rules, people need to understand, the viewers, I want them to understand, it's not a, a Republican, Democrat, it's everyone's issue. It doesn't matter what your beliefs are in, you're affected by these laws in one form or shape or way of the other. Somehow, you've got 600 different occupations and it's affecting you no matter what. Rather you're an independent contractor, rather you're a consumer, rather you're an employer, doesn't matter, you're feeling the effects of it. Am I right? You're absolutely right. It's it's absolutely falsehood to frame the AB5 independent contractor issue as a left or, or, or right issue because with AB5, when everybody started coming into my group, it was mostly from the Democrat side. We've got performing artists, translators and interpreters, musicians. I mean, musicians were the loudest. They ended up, um, they had like a change.org petition and they got 750,000 people to sign it so that it was, it. They, 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 they made enough noise to be able to get an audience with Lorena Gonzalez and kiss her ring and try to get some exemptions for 
a simple bar band who all of a sudden had to make everybody an employee. It's just insane. It, you know, and again, you look at the same thing, you know, back to California or either in other states, you know, like the Detroit area where I'm originally from, you know, there are bands that would that would come on stage and they would play. They'd have different gigs and, and they were working hard so they would get recognized. They would get noticed. All of a sudden now you're a band. You're supposed to be an employee. Who's in charge of the band? Is that going to be the company? I mean, they've made it so difficult for people where it shouldn't be. You know, they're taking out a lot of opportunities that people traditionally would have, aren't going to have anymore because, hey, I don't want to deal with with employees, you know, on this. There's just not enough work for them. As you deal with employees and you face a whole other avalanche of, you know, private attorney general act and and all these other you know, this voluminous labor code uh, book that I- 1,100 pages, 1,100 pages. Yeah, like a giant encyclopedia, you know? So uh, with the PAGA, which I would, I'd like to, you know, have your, uh, explain a little bit about how PAGA and independent contracting r regulations also kind of intersect. And they just keep hammering it away at the business community like we're perpetual cash cows that they can continue to go after and they treat us like criminals and these unions, they can't stay in their own lane. They need to, to focus on their own industries and their own people and stay out of our business and, and keep absolutely, their off absolutely our livelihood. Yeah, I mean, you're spot on with, with that statement. They really do need to uh, focus on themselves a, a little bit more without a doubt. Uh, but, you know, like with, with PAGA, the Private Attorney General Act, and yes, now, you know, many more suits because of the independent contractor scenario. Uh, you know, 1,100-page labor law digest, you violate one of those items, uh, then what ends up happening is you end up uh, involved in a class action lawsuit. So it could be one person uh, that decides to go an attorney and now all of a sudden that one person is representing 10 employees, 50 employees, 100 employees, 1,000 employees, even if they don't want to be represented. And again, back to misclassification, you know, it, it's, it's opened up a whole new world of lawsuits. And the lawsuits don't benefit the aggrieved employee. As I found out when I, when I perused kabia.org, um, I found out that you guys had mentioned Uber prior to AB5. There was a case that was settled in January of 2018 where the, the court just recently approved the, you know, multi $8 million settlement covering 1.5 million drivers. And the court's docs show that the attorneys took 2.3 million of the settlement and the state took 3.6 million. And that left enough for the drivers to take $1.08 each. So you tell me who's who's committing wage theft. We protested an attorney. We were the first group to do it. We went, took a page out of the, the big labor's book and we went out there with our signs. And the attorney says, well, who hired you? And I said, we're all, you know, business owners here and we're tired of getting hit with these kind of lawsuits. And he's, well, it wasn't meant for the employees. Oh, well, who was it meant for? Well, it was meant for for the state 75 25 it's just you want to teach the employers a lesson so they they change their habits change their habit of making sure that the paycheck stub has the right spelling of, and, and name change the habit of making sure the employee takes their lunch at before five hours not five hours in one minute or two minutes Otherwise, then that's such a drastic thing, it could cost you a million dollars. And it just shows you how lopsided, again, some of these laws are. And again, you hear the same, the, the same story over and over again. Paga, the unattended consequences, the unintended consequences. And guess what? It's everybody is feeling that except for the trial attorneys. And the state. Right. And California used to be the golden state of golden opportunity of innovation and entrepreneurship. And Steve Jobs started Apple Computer in his garage. Well, he wouldn't be allowed to do that now because of AB5 and all these other PAGA regulations. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just like 
you know, a degree too warm or too cold, you know, you could get hit with a Paga loose lawsuit and we'd never have Six, 60, 68 degrees are warmer. Right. <laughs> I know. So it's driving uh, entrepreneur. It's it's career crushing. AB five. It's entrepreneur killing. It's freelance busting. So we talk. They talk about union busting. Well, they're misclassifying. Uh, uh, great, great word. I love it. Freelance busting. That's what they're doing. Right. Mission accomplished. Julie Sue, Joe Biden, Lorena Gonzalez. You've done a wonderful job of. It. Yes. And they claim they're protecting workers, but yet when you look at all the fine details of, of AB5, you see some of these exemptions don't make any sense. Some of the most None. dangerous jobs in California got an exemption thanks to their unions, like commercial fishing, for example. I mean, make it make sense. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. Nothing makes sense about the, the exemptions and the carve-outs of AB5 because you have a, a pharmacist don't have an exemption, but a but a psychologist does. A grant writer doesn't have a ha, a grant writer has an exemption, but a grant researcher does not. A, a print journalist has a partial exemption, but a radio journalist does not, and a videography journalist does not. A, a, a doctor has an exemption, but a, a nurse practitioner does not. A dentist has a pr exemption, but a dental technician does not. An, uh, uh, an, an attorney has an exemption, but a paralegal does not. So it just throws a wrecking ball into every traditional kind of, of contracting relationship that you can imagine, whether you have an exemption or not. Because is a grant writer really going to hire and put on payroll their grant researcher for their single project that they got? Never. No. Never. And you're going to see more things done out of state, but now maybe that's going to be a problem because now it's become a, a, a national issue. What um, what would you say, I mean, what can somebody do right now? If you're watching the show and, and you're an independent contractor, you were an independent contractor, uh, or you're concerned about everything that's going on, what would you like them to do? Well, they need to educate themselves because reading uh, news stories and media accounts of AB5 will lead them astray because people uh, erroneously don't have their facts straight. And a lot of times people are just complacent or or just not even, I mean, they don't even think that AB5 applies to them or that it even exists in California anymore. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on or even some of our own allies in the fight you know, don't have their facts straight. So the Yeah, they don't understand it. They, they just, hey, labor union says SEIU says this is something you should do okay we're going to do it we're going to go along with it do you understand what this law is doing do you understand the effects it's having uh, mr or mrs legislator uh well uh, uh, uh kind of no you don't you you don't and that's the biggest issue they have to stop taking the lead from labor unions and talk to small business owners, talk to independent contractors, talk to people that are really doing the work and, 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 and not, not labor unions. Well, a lot of people are really struggling under AB5, including uh, event production companies and um, wedding, wedding uh, planners and um, uh, independent filmmakers are really there. Are a lot of them. We have an independent filmmaker in my group who says it's. He goes into vast detail about how, how AB five is just decimating the, that that sector in California. Most of them are moving out of state, yeah. and it's impossible to operate under the purview of AB five when you have all of these, um, you know, uh, traditional independent contractors that uh, are now having to be put on payroll. Um, AB5 is uh, alive and well and wreaking havoc on hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of professions. A lot of them have fallen through the cracks. Uh, the, the freelance uh, transcription profession is all but extinct in California because of AB5. Wow. And that that profession have, is mostly comprised of, of sen seniors and women. And I've got dozens and dozens of, of people who have lost their their careers, it's, it's really disproportionately affects women and, and seniors in particular. Yeah, and that's that's the sad part. I mean, people don't realize. And then what do you do? 
How do you find another job? I mean, what do you do at this point? You had revenue coming in, you were happy, and now you're displaced because, you know, some union monger decides they need to do this. Right. And the DOL is saying, well, if you're in business for yourself, you can be an independent contractor. That's their new line. But you can't believe that for one second because it's their definition of what it means to be in business for yourself. Even if you have an LLC or an S Corp, it says so in the rule. It doesn't mean you're an independent contractor. And that's AB5. If you have an LLC or an S Corp, that doesn't exempt you from AB5, not in the least. You have to pass 12 other requirements of the business to business exemption in order in order to be able to operate as an independent contractor who with the with an S core and LLC. So it's all a lot of I, I don't know what their ultimate goal is with with this um DOL rule um other than to just you know try to corral as many people into employees as possible for the purpose of unionizing them. But we've already seen Tom there is a uh, tutoring company, a national nationwide tutoring company based in California, who on the day that that DOL rule was published, which was January 11, 2024, or January 10, 2024, sent out a termination letter to all of its independent contractors in New Jersey and Massachusetts, wow. telling them that beginning March 11, 2024, which is when the DOL rule goes into effect, that they can no longer contract with independent contractors. Wow. And they had already let go of their, their California-based contractors as well. So we've already, we're already seen companies preemptively terminating their relationships with independent contractors because of this rule. We're already seeing it. So final thoughts, what do you think? What would you like to say? I would like to like more people to to come on board and voice their uh, voice their opinions to their representatives about this attack, the all these this multi-prong attack on um, our careers and our livelihoods and our self-employment opportunities and to stop thinking in terms of the poor exploited gig worker or the janitor right. some and right. recognize that this is about every single profession under the sun that has has um operates with traditional you know independent contracting relationships educate yourself come into my group freelancers against ab5 we stay on top of all the latest how do you get to how do you get to your group karen it's a public Facebook group. Just come on in and join and scroll through all of the uh, the, the dirty details every day. It's some kind of horror story or other that, and it's just never ending. And you can also, uh, if, if you're in another state, um, be on the lookout for AB5 copycat bills like in Minnesota or, right. or uh, Rhode Island. You know, they say, that, oh, everybody thinks that AB5 is a disaster. And we don't necessarily want to implement that kind of a disaster in our state, but they then they go ahead and and you know want to uh, deploy these ABC tests. And what's the uh, what's the coalition's website address again? again? The co- coalition's website is saveindependentwork.org, and there's all sorts of links to articles where you can educate yourself about what's going on with this new rule, all these the legal analysis of it, and and how really it is a very insidious, pernicious, uh, damaging, corrupt uh, regulation that really need people need to pay attention to. Well, Karen, thanks again for coming back. It was great seeing you. Thanks for all the hard work you're doing, all the effort uh, you're doing, we're doing. Uh, and we got to continue to fight. You know, our we need to push back. We need to fight back. We need a, a, a lot more uh, Karen Andersons in, in this world right now. And and thank you so much for everything you're doing. And have a wonderful day. Thanks, Tom.